Hi, my name is Keith Williams. This is a video made for ENGR 1624 at the University of Virginia. This is just a quick tutorial on how to do technical sketching or drawing with Autodesk Sketchbook. I'll begin by selecting a nice large page. I like to see how large my page is. Now I'm going to select a couple of images that I'd like to reproduce by hand sketching. So I've imported some images that I took with my smartphone. I resize and arrange those and trim them a little bit just so that they look good. What I'm going to do is put those three images, here comes the last one, I'm going to put those into one layer. I'll combine the layers in a second. By combining those layers I've got something that I can adjust the opacity in a global way so I can make the images disappear behind my sketch. Now I start just doodling and making sure everything's working. You can see with a freehand pencil it's really too hard to make a nice drawing. So what I'm going to do is use some tools in Sketchbook that enable us to draw more precisely. So here I'm using the ruler tool. Pull out the ruler and just start sketching with a pencil tool and I do that to define all the edges of my paper clip. As you can see, it's really easy to undo any mistakes that you make. And with pencil, you're making fairly light marks anyway, so no harm done if you make any mistakes. If you're impressed by how quickly I'm doing this, just bear in mind that this video is playing back several times faster than I actually did the drawing. So now I'm trying to connect those straight edges with curvy ones and I'm using a predictive tool to sort of smooth out my rough edges. So what I'll do is I'll go around the paper clip and as best I can on my pad simply sketch out the curvy edges as you can see some of it's pretty challenging at least for my hand. So I go ahead and make some rough edges and I'll go back and fix those shouldn't take too long to fix those. So now you can see the paper clip starting to take shape. And you can always go back to the underlying images in the background. Use those as a reference to see if you can improve your sketch. So now I'm looking at the edges and thinking, hmm, some of those edges look kind of rough. So I just use a series of pencil markings and erasers and so forth to try to improve that a little bit. We can zoom in, of course, and use the eraser. We want a hard edge eraser for this particular thing. And go in and erase all my little blunders. No problem. So now the edges are a little bit smoother. Still not perfect, but bear in mind that this is at a pretty large scale now. I've got the screen blown up substantially. I'm going to go in and try to repair any stray pencil marks. Try to make a nice, smooth, contiguous boundary. You'll see why in a minute. Once I have a nice boundary, I'll be able to fill it. All right, so there's a few more stray marks to repair. There we go. And, well, overall not too bad. Now what I can do is try to fill. Now look what happens if you've got a hole in your shape. When you try to fill it, it fills the whole sheet. That's not good. So now what I'm going to do is go in and do some fine editing. Just make sure that there aren't any gaps in the overall boundary, and then you can get a good fill like that. I don't want to fill it solid black. I think I want to fill it with a sort of a gray to try to make it look a little bit more like metal. So I'll play around, find a nice gray that works. There we go. 
Now this looks too much like a matte gray. I'm just trying a couple different techniques to give it more of a metallic look. I think what I'll do is introduce some shading. So the pencil tool made with a pen tool um, and also with a with an airbrush should be able to make it look a little bit more realistic. There we go. Just darkening in the edges a little bit. Using the ruler again to make sure those edges are nice and sharp. So they pop out nicely. Cleaning up my blenders as I go. Now I'm using the pen tool to ink it and make the edges even better to find. I think it's always a good idea to start off with a soft pencil, and get a little bit harder, and then use a pen for the final shape. Also gives you a hand, your hand a chance to sort of train it to feel all the different curves and just relax into the image. Okay, just about done. A few little things to fix here and there. You can see where I made some pen mistakes. I can go back and fix those. I'm going to change my eraser width so that I can do some sort of fine erasing. I can go right up to the edge get rid of some extra pen marks that I don't need. There we go. Alright, overall the paper clip doesn't look very three-dimensional right now, so I'm going to do a little bit of um, shading around the edges. See if I can make it... Oh, well, that didn't work so well. That was the airbrush. I'm going to use a thinner airbrush. Let's see if I can... There we go. Uh, not quite. Uh, getting there. There we go. Looks a little bit more three-dimensional that way. And let's see if I can... I take that and I add a little bit of specular reflection that I think I'll be able to make it look more realistic. Normally with technical drawing we don't really worry about the shading so much. It's more about the actual shape, but I think it's fun to explore the tools and just see what's out there. See how it can make an image more engaging. by giving a little bit of realism. Okay. That just about does it for this part of my image. Didn't take too long, a few minutes. Notice that unlike CAD, with the sketching we're not really worrying so much about scale. We're just trying to make it look realistic. Try to convey the idea All right, so now you can compare it before and after, so the smartphone image and the other image. Now let's move on to the next one. Now that I'm an expert at drawing paper clips, this should go a little bit faster, I hope. So what I'm going to do is use the same tools, predictive curves and so forth, to just go in and trace out the the straight edges first, that's where I usually begin, and then start making the curves, start closing those. Oops. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. I'll go ahead and make the outline of the paper clip, and then just as I did before, the idea is not to obsess too much about reflection, but just get the basic idea down, and then start gradually, sequentially improving it with eraser and pen and so forth. That already looks pretty realistic. What I've done here is gone through the very, very sharp eraser tip and just kind of given it, cleaned it up a little. Up a little. That edge doesn't look very realistic, I'll fix that. Now we can do just a little bit of shading when we repair these edges just a bit more. And there we go. 
needs to be a little bit darker, I think. It feels a little bit gray to me. So I'm going to go in and fill in, try to sharpen up the edges a little bit. There we go. That's starting to look like something. A little bit darker. And we can go in and hit the bottom a little bit. Hmm. Top part doesn't look very okay. There we go. All right, now the hand. Now hands are notoriously very difficult. But for those of us who are not artists, hands are very hard to draw. <laughs> so nice to have a photograph in the background to use as a template. I'm just gonna use a pencil to kind of sketch out the hand. Um, got my thumb there, my finger. Just a little bit of sketching around the edges. Just find those edges and sketch them out by constantly changing the opacity of the background image, I can see how well I'm doing. In this particular image, I'm not planning to shade. I just want to make a basic outline so that the viewer immediately knows what's going on here. This is supposed to depict how you hold a paper clip before you put it on the paper. That's all it is. Pretty simple. Using a pen to kind of darken things in. And there we go. Alright, so that's image number two. I don't particularly like those other fingers there. They kind of distract, so I'll get rid of them. Okay, doke. Need to draw the paper. There's no paper in my image yet. So I'll go in and make sure I'm in the right layer and go ahead and sketch some paper. Go with the pencil and darken in, maybe shade. Create a little bit of a shadow effect around the paper so that the viewer interprets it as two-dimensional. Looks like I went a little bit too far with my pencil. I'll go in and repair that. There we go. Let's go in and clean up those edges a little bit. All right. Now, the last image. Now, I should really be an expert at paper clips at this point. What I'm going to do is use the ruler to, of course, make the straight edges very quickly and efficiently. Notice one of the really cool things about this technique of importing an image and then sketching over it is that it'll enable you to get the perspective exactly right. It's really hard for us to visualize how to take a three-dimensional object and project it into 2D. So by taking a camera shot of it, it really helps out. It'll teach you a lot about perspective. I didn't use very extreme perspectives in this case, but you could see that if you'd like, you could even use lensing effects or vanishing point, other kinds of effects, and learn how to sketch those. All right, I've got the outline of my paper clip here, and now it's clipped onto paper, so of course I need to draw the paper. I'll get to that in just a sec. First, I'm going to clean up my, my mass, darken in a few of the edges, give it a little bit more of a 3D effect. There we are. Clip looks pretty decent. Um... Now I could draw my paper. I'm going to draw a couple of sheets of paper so that you get the idea that the clip is actually holding. Oops, didn't make my paper very straight. Oh well, that's alright. I'm going to go in with a pencil and repair the joint between the paper clip and the paper. Add a little bit of shading here and there. Darken in my... With a pen, I'm just going to darken in the edges of my paper clip so that you get sort of a lighting effect. So it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. The image is basically done at this point now. I'm just fussing, trying to make it look a little bit better. And there we are. I'm just going to save it. And it's good to go.